drawn to the unexplored recesses of the galaxy in pursuit of the Covenant, the crew of the Spirit of Fire discovered a Forerunner shield world. This mysterious Dyson Sphere held a long since dormant secret. Within its interior hung a fleet of Forerunner ships, a power so immense that their exploitation at the hands of the Covenant would most certainly spell the end of humanity. The Spirit of Fire's resident scientist, Professor Anders, had been captured by the Covenant, forced to activate the fleet on an elevated platform known as the Apex Site. Narrowly escaping, she quickly found herself on the interior surface of this artificial world, a surface which now surged with the parasite known as the Flood. Fortunately for Anders, Sergeant Ford and the Spirit's crew had tracked her to this location, stopping the Flood and quickly bringing her to safety. You want to be rescued or not? There, Captain Cutter and the Professor discussed the bitter reality of the Covenant's newly acquired Forerunner fleet. With no debate, they agreed that the only way to stop the Covenant would be to destroy the entire shield world and everything within it. Disengaging their slip space drive, the Spirit's crew lowered it to the world's interior surface near the base of the Apex site. They knew that in order to destroy the fleet, they would have to destroy the shield world as well an act which could only be achieved by overloading their FTL drive near the installation's star. Pushing through the last vestiges of the Covenant infantry, Forge and the Spartan Red team led a charge to the Apex site. Although the Covenant had been momentarily forced from their position, they were not without a fight. Quickly recovering, the Arbiter and the large contingent of elites assaulted the Apex site, engaging Forge and the Spartans. After a brief but bloody battle, the Spartans emerged victorious. And despite Forge only narrowly defeating the Arbiter, he realized that the slip space drive had been damaged in the process. It would now require a manual overload. Someone would have to stay behind. Sir, it's already overheating. I'll have to separate the core and align them manually when they need to blow. Son, I have a feeling before this is over, we'll need every last Spartan in the fight. I can do this. Report back to the ship. Without hesitation, Forge chose himself for the task, ordering the Spartans back to the Spirit of Fire. As the drive overloaded, the Spirit of Fire sped toward the Shield World's sun, using the star's expanding gravity well to slingshot their vessel out of the Shield World as the entire superstructure collapsed around them. A short time later, Captain Cutter would order the Spirit of Fire survivors into cryosleep. Without an FTL, the ship would take years to return home. While the UNSC long held the crew of the Spirit of Fire as missing, they suddenly changed this designation to Lost with All Hands on February 10th, 2534. The reason for this change was never publicly disclosed, but remained aggressively contested among suspicious family members of the crew. The true fate of the Spirit of Fire, its captain, and its crew remains a mystery, even to this day.